In this video, I'll be taking a look at Oz Unity Sapphire. Now, this is not the garishness distro known as the Ultimate Edition Gamers. No, this is more of a classy, sophisticated looking distro. Well, they've built on Ubuntu's Unity desktop and customized it with their own theme. So we've got a nice light and dark desktop here. And they've added quite a few applications. So the ISO file was over two gig to download. Yes, fairly chunky, but I think most of the applications are things that you might use. Now, it is more of a distro for intermediate users. It's not really a new, new user's distro. It's something more that you would find useful if you have used Ubuntu and you just fancied something a little bit different with how it looks. So, like I say, you've got a different theme there. They've done a lot of work on editing the compiz settings, but considering the extra size of it, it's not really any slower. It was about two seconds slower to boot up than the raw version of Ubuntu 14.04, which is what it is based on, the long-term support release of Ubuntu 14.04. And it's about 200 extra meg of RAM required, so it's about 660 meg of RAM base usage and 12 seconds boot up time. Now one downside I did notice with it was that they've mapped the middle click mouse button to the Expo desktop switcher, which meant if you're in a browser, so you're in Firefox, and middle click on a link, which by default would open the link in a new tab, instead it opened the desktop switcher, which was a bit annoying. So I went into compass settings and just unmapped that. I don't know why they did that, but <laughs> everything else was pretty good. So let's take more of a look at it. So the layout of the desktop is exactly the same as you would find in Ubuntu's Unity desktop. So you've got the icons there on the left hand side. On the top right hand side we've got the launcher there for Clementine. We've got this privacy launcher where you can re remove some of your history within the Zeitgeist launcher which is where Unity records like the applications and files that you've previously opened. Network settings, keyboard settings, Thunderbird email, hmm. Under the volume control, you can see we've got the different media players. <laughs> okay, well, there's Rhythmbox and Clementine, and then we've got VLC media player. Then we've got the time, calendar, and then shutdown menu. If you've used Ubuntu before, then you can use this distro perfectly well. And you can see here when you open the Unity launcher, then you've got your searches there for the categories and sources. And then weirdly, it's not displaying previously opened applications here. I've kind of forgotten what Ubuntu is actually like now, because <laughs> it's been a little while since I've used it. Under the applications, well, first off, you can see the Dash plugins. Yeah, it's quite a few there. Uh, there's things you might find useful. You know, Facebook, Firefox, and Chrome bookmark. Well, that's Chromium bookmarks. Some other social networking. Pre-installed applications. Well, there's quite a few, actually. And here's where one of the downsides is that uh, it's missing some of these icons. It would be good if all the pre-installed applications were of the same icon theme. It's kind of what puts me off a lot of these icon themes really. Okay well when you go and open application there you can see some of the icons go coloured. Ubuntu itself does that but I don't think it colorizes plain icons all the time does it? Um, to be honest I would have to check that but this effect does look quite nice. It's a bit hard to tell which are the calc, impress and writer there. You can see a tiny little icon there that's a pen, square root, and I'm not sure what that mask is called. Oh, it's the comedy, uh, I can't remember, comedy and something else, mask, don't know. The icons for close, minimize, maximize are kind of like the Mac styled, and they're on the left hand side. The styling here of LibreOffice looks perfectly nice. Within Nautilus, couple of extras here, so we've got Play on Linux Virtual Drives and Google Drive. I've gone and logged into my Google Drive. It's not quite working properly because there's a few more files under the root folder. But other than that, it does seem to work pretty well. So I can open the pictures here, perfectly fine. But oh, would you fancy that design for a living room? I'm not sure. Black and white, kind of like this distro really. Maybe that's what I was destined towards. Can I open the videos? Let's have a look. Yes! <laughs> Excellent. And the layout of where your folder is, that's a little bit different to the standard theme in Nautilus, but at least it's still easy enough to keep track of where you are. Opening up a new tab, 
let's have a look at that. Ah, we get a slightly different variance on the theme now with the gradient effect there that's kind of inverse to the folders. So light to dark, then dark to light. This theme certainly does look quite nice. Opening up comp is, we can see some of the effects they've done on the opening, closing and minimising the applications. So I have gone and done this work for you, and that's mainly on the animations. The Alton tab application switcher is pretty much how it looks in Ubuntu. It does look quite good though with the same colour theme there. The Windows key and tab, yeah, that just scrolls down the icons on the Unity launcher. On the rubbish bin there, where I've got something in there at the moment, it's got a coloured icon, so if I'm going to empty it, yep, goes to black and grey. <laughs> Excellent. In terms of the wallpapers, they're all kinds of this similar design really. Do you know, I'm not sure what that actually is. I can't read the writing. It looks good though, doesn't it? I can't complain at that. It certainly is, uh, it certainly is non-offensive. I'm not going to delve into the rest of the settings there because it's all fairly standard with Ubuntu. Let's just look at a couple of other features in here with the within Unity. Okay, this is all standard here within the search in videos. So I can open up the video, or either show in the folder or play it. Does it recognise the music? Because I've had a bit of trouble there. Didn't seem to want to play it. Oh, it is now. It's just being a bit slow. That was all. It's only got one album and a song that I didn't play. Okay, it's opening a rhythm box. But the other choice is Clementine Music Player. It's come with the restricted extras pre-installed, so no messing around there. So here's what I thought of Oz Unity Sapphire. Well, they have done quite a classy theming there and put some nice wallpapers on here. And there's quite a few new useful features that they've added into Unity. On the downside though, it's missing some of the icons for a few of the pre-installed applications. That's one of these downsides I find with these additional icon packs. Because you get a whole load of applications which do look nice, and then you get a few with the default icon, and they do look completely out of place. And in this case, they do. <laughs> You've got coloured icons where everything else is a more dark grey, light grey. And that annoyance there of the middle click mouse button being mapped to the Expo desktop switcher. But overall, I'm giving this distro 80% which when you compare it against the other Unity desktop distros, it comes out on top at the moment. So yes, I have rated it higher than Ubuntu 14.04 itself, purely because there's these few extras in there. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later.